boom, put a 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 boom, boom. Be sad, be sad. What sad are you on? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. It's episode number 52. It's the A Side B Side podcast. What's going on, Adam? I am excited that we made it to one year, Brooke. It's, uh, it's a big deal. I know. I can't believe it either. This is uh, big news, big news, big news, big news. So it's been very fun, and especially when you factor in how weird this year has been. I think it's extra, extra impressive. <laughs> so um, new Loki came out today. I haven't watched it. If you saw it, don't tell me anything because I need to watch it. I um, last week was like, whoa. <laughs> and what is there? What, yeah. Two more episodes, one more episode, two more episodes. I think after the, so like, I haven't watched this week's either because it was the same way. I was like, I'm not going to get distracted and it's just been a busy day already. So I'm just going to wait till after the podcast to watch it. So I think including the one that came out today, there are two episodes. Two left. Okay. Yeah. So like today's and then next week should be the finale. Wow. That's, uh, man, it went by fast. Like, I feel like it just went by so fast. Well, and I feel like I have to look, I will have to look it up, but I feel like WandaVision and Falcon and Winter Soldier had more episodes. They didn't. They each had like eight. They each had, oh yeah, but that's more than six. Oh, that's true. Okay, so Loki has six. Uh, let's see, WandaVision, if my computer would not be I, slow. I feel like it, it was eight, and maybe Winter Soldier was only six, but I know... At least WandaVision was eight. WandaVision was nine. Nine. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like that's more than two months worth of storytelling. And then Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It was. Let's try uh, to bring up a trailer. That was, that, was, that was only six. That was only six? Yeah, oh. it was only six, I guess. Yeah. I just pulled up the Disney Plus app. So Yeah, I'm looking at IMDb. Uh, yeah. yeah. But they packed that, a lot kind of into those six episodes, man. They Maybe, did. It, it felt like they, more. they did. And I and like WandaVision had one episode that was like at almost an hour. Mm-hmm. Like it, it feels like these are going well, I I guess, you know, most of them are about an hour. WandaVision had one I thought that was like extra long i, I think the wrong. final one i think the the yeah i think the last one was the longest one but yeah they're they're doing a great job i'm i've already got my tickets for for this weekend to see black widow congrats so. to scarlett johansson who it has just been confirmed that she is expecting with colin jost oh i didn't know that congrats proof that funny way gets to, the girl to, yeah well good job colin it's just proof that funny does get the girl sometimes. I mean, he's not like oh, a bad looking yeah. dude. He's just like your average dude, but he's funny right. and he's got a great personality, yeah. which will win over the girl. So they say. <laughs> so I told you last week I've been, I started, I was watching line of duty and I finally finished um, the most recent season just finished in April and the way they've been going, it's like they're every other year and with, of course, COVID and everything. So even if they do, season seven has not been confirmed, but it hasn't been, they haven't said they're not going to do it yet. But even if they do, it's probably not going to be like till 2022, 2023. Right. Take, Which, takes a while. Yeah. I'm like, oh, come on. I need my six episodes for the next season. That is that is the rough part when you like get caught up on something you've been binging. So I always find myself slowing down so I don't like get totally caught up or like just refusing to watch the last episode or something because I don't want it to be over. Like there's one episode of Midsummer Murders that's available on Acorn that I have not watched. And it's been like three months where I've been putting it off. <laughs> I've been waiting a year for the new, like the new ones to get released. And there were only like three or four probably because of COVID. And I'm like, I don't want to have to wait again. So I've always got it in my back pocket. There you go. Um, some guilty pleasure viewing too hot to handle. Uh, season two came out. It's even better than the first season. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. I love it. So 
basically there's um i don't even remember how many couples there are because they bring people in and people leave or whatever but so these quote unquote gorgeous singles are put on this like island and of course you get young intoxicated barely clad people on a tropical beach what are they going to want to naturally do they're gonna want to hook up but yeah they cannot because if they do it costs thousands of dollars and the there's the goal is to win this money at the end of this vacation or whatever and so they can't so it's like it's like abstinence island yeah, basically. But they don't know that until they get there. They think it's like a big party and then they get on the island and it's like, oh, you're on too hot to handle. You can't touch. You can't do this. You can't do that. So then, you know, watching these people like, because they're the whole point of it is to get people to make deeper, uh, uh, wink, wink, deeper connections. Right. And so more than just physical. Right. And so then you've got these people that are like pairing off and then you do what humans do and they want to do that, but they, they can't because if they do, like, I think a kiss is like $3,000. Like a kiss. That's a a very expensive kiss. Yeah. It better be freaking worth it. That better be one hell of a kiss. So like the prize money starts off as like a big pot of money and they keep, please tell me that at some point there is like a giant, scoreboard that's counting the money down for each person. <laughs> no, but like they keep them updated. So they have um it's kind of like a Siri or, or a Google speaker, but they call her Lana and so she okay. she kind of like is like she calls everybody to the gazebo or whatever and she's like you have $22,000 remaining, you know, and um cuz she's British. So that was my really right. horrible British accent. Um <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like I, it sounded pretty good oh my thank you and she's like john and tabitha you kissed last night and that cost three thousand dollars you know and then everybody's like john and tabitha what are you doing you know and so so and, and is it like could you just be the one person that doesn't like interact with anybody and then you'd win or is it everybody is like a like a group project it's like a group pot like Everybody who's left on the island at the end, it's like a group pot. The oh, first, so the, the first season. Now, season two, there's some switcheroozy there, and I'm not going to tell you that. I don't want to spoil it, but because yeah. I, I don't really watch the dating shows. So uh, it, you're the, the, everybody is like wanting you to behave because it's impacting their money as well. Gotcha. And I'm like. Can we get like a like an even more grown up version of this? Because like, can I get a house payment or like a new car or something? Because if you're like, don't first of all, don't have sex. Uh, yeah, okay, not a problem. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I've been winning this game. I didn't even know I was playing. Been there, done that for a while. <laughs> now give me my check. Roll me my money. Um, but- it is interesting, though, with like, are all these people like post post COVID probably were doing like the whole isolating thing. So I feel like that would make it even worse. Well, I or even I, harder. I don't know, because, well, and they're all like 20 something. So I'm sure they're like, hey, let's COVID's over. You know, we're on a deserted island, whatever. I don't know. But I'm just saying, yeah. if it was like a grown-up version, like I say grown-up, they're not kids, but like a, <laughs> look at us talking like old people. I know. Oh, these kids today and they're hooking up with their they're <laughs> necking at the cars over at the car park where they should be should be home, you know, by can 8 we, p.m. Can we do like a 30, 40 year old version and it's like a, you get a house at the end or 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 like a, a vacation of some kind? Because I really I, I would sign up for that. I mean, like I said, it's I got it in the bag. I think you would just have all these people that get, and this is probably me projecting, but a lot of people in their 30s and, and 40s have kind of just kind of found their groove and what they're comfortable with if they're single. And they're like, they're like, whatever, been doing this for a while. Cool. I don't think it would be that great television. It's just <laughs> a lot of people like, <laughs> 
it wouldn't. Everybody's just doing their own thing. Like, you know, somebody's <laughs> over here doing yoga, and a guy's building a ship. You know, it's like, whatever. <laughs> like, they see each other at dinner. They'd be like, hey, how's your ship? Eh, it's in a bottle. Okay, cool. All right. Not a metaphor. <laughs> you read your book today? It was How far yeah. did you get in your book? Watching anything good, thing good on Netflix? Yeah, that's that's exactly yeah. what it would be. And yeah. people would be like, this show sucks. <laughs> like, what is, like, I'm living this show. Why does this happen? Uh, <laughs> they mix it up by bringing in somebody as like X and it's like, yeah, okay. And I still don't want you, so go away. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then everybody else is like you made such a good choice Look at that. you have to cut people out of your life they were toxic good for you good for you good for you i'm so, <laughs> so, so proud of the journey for you <laughs> i mean oh, i don't man. know i'd watch it but then again. I mean, I would do, but then again, it's my life. So I'd be like, girl, yes, girl. Yes, right. Cut that toxicity out of your life. <laughs> Look at George learning how to cook on his own. That's right, George. You can cook for one. It's cool. <laughs> Put and that I, air fryer. And I use George as just a random name because I didn't want to say Adam, but right. Adam. <laughs> but learning to cook on his own. Look at Adam using that air fryer. Go, Adam. Hey. <laughs> I don't, I wish I had an air fryer. I'm just, I've been using this newfangled device called the oven. Oh boy. Learning how to use that. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> Evidently, news to me, does more than frozen pizzas. Wow. You, so, yeah. Look at you learning stuff. Been a, been a big year for me. Yeah. It does, also does chicken nuggets. So, <laughs> and I not have in the, the diet dinosaur of a 12 shape. year old. <laughs> Dude, those are hard to find. <laughs> Meyer, do you have a Meyer there? I uh, no, we don't have Meyer at all. No, we've got just like, like weird Minnesota version of grocery stores. Mm -hmm. Like True Value bought one of the. So when I grew up, the two major grocery stores in the Twin Cities, or at least that I knew of, were a place called Cub Foods and Rainbow Foods. And I thought those were like huge brands. They're everywhere. They're like just Minnesota brands. You go out of go out of the state, you, no one's ever heard of them. Oh, yeah. I guess used to used to be festival too, but True Value bought Cub, but they didn't really change anything. And then Cub bought Rainbow, and all the rainbows went away. So now we have Target. Oh well, Target. Tar yeah, Target. Target does groceries, and we finally started getting high V's up here. Oh yeah, I've heard of those. I haven't seen one in a long time. I can't remember where the last one was that I saw. It's a California thing, isn't it? Oh, maybe that. Okay. Huh. I feel like it's a California thing. I don't know. I don't know. Those California people. It was like those whippersnappers in their dating. You know, ah, who knows what they do. <laughs> well, speaking of dating, because apparently I look when you can't do, you just watch. So um, I started watching Love Island, but the UK version, because I was asking some people, I was like, well, which which version should I watch? Because apparently there's a US version as well. And uh, right. they were like, no, no, no. If you're going to watch it, watch the UK version. And it's hilarious. Like, I am thoroughly enjoying it. They seem to be like gigantic star. Like, I'll be reading about the soccer team that I follow, Newcastle United. And then, like, there'll be somebody tangentially connected to love island or something and they'll get mentioned in the article when it's about like we need to find a new right back but then i was like why are we talking about love island apparently they're like they the kardashians are, they're just yeah, everything they're like huge there like here love island you're like who's you're on what show what who are you but yeah. uh, like over there apparently like after they get on the show they're like huge and like i'm on the first season so one of the girls on the show uh now of course, this is going back because, like I said, I'm in the first season. I think there's like six. Um, so it's back in like 2015, I think. But anyway, so one of the girls on the show was actually a girl that had posted a picture with Zane from One Direction. This is pretty funny. So she posted a picture on her social media of Zane from One Direction and then somehow got accused of breaking up One Direction. And so like she's on social media and like they're all kind of social media influencers like initially but this show has made them bigger. Or uh, I think one guy was like a, a soccer, a professional footballer, excuse me. Um, but anyway, so this girl, her name's Lauren. She posts a picture of Zane with her and Zane of One Direction. And then like all the One Directioners back then, cause they're kind of like the, the K-pop, 
I, well, K-pop, I think is a little more like gung ho, but you know, One Directioners were really frenzied and like, she got accused of like breaking up One Direction and she was getting like all kinds of hate on her Instagram. And so she became, I guess in the UK known as the girl that broke up One Direction. So poor girl. And she's having a rough, rough go at it on the show. So I'm hoping things kind of turn around for her, but anyway, so. And you're, and this is still in the first season? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah but- I thought so. The uh, oh, so if you you watch Ted Lasso now? I have not. Oh, you haven't? No. I thought I. You should. Okay. I'll That's a long on story. One of the characters, I think they kind of hint around that like she's a like she's a model. Like it definitely feels like she's like kind of got famous for being a social media personality, kind of like this same way Mm -hmm. and she's dating a footballer and uh so definitely kind of like they don't say that she was on a show like that but it's like very hinted at Mm -hmm. so i I think that would be interesting and you should really watch it it's great and a new season is coming out soon so all right you want to get caught up i'll check it out i feel like i feel like the love island people there are kind of like the people that were on like real world the first season like everybody watched it and everybody knew who they were Got yeah, them. like well, because they they also had their version of Jersey Jersey Shore, oh, which was um, uh, what was it called? <laughs> Only way is Essex, uh, uh, which was like Essex County or something, but very much very Jersey Shore. And the people from that like like show were as big as you know Snooki and uh, Jay Wow and the guys. The situation. And those dudes. Who else was a situation? Gosh, I don't remember. Holly D. They Vinny, all had they all had really Vinny. Yeah, they had really spiky hair. Yeah, yeah. There was there did have all that spiky hair and the tans and the what was it? Jim Jim laundry tan Jim tan laundry Jim Jim tan, GTL. I, I don't know. I I I can honestly say, uh, well, not easily say, but I can honestly say that uh, I have never seen a full episode. I think that's what they used to yell, GTL, Jim Tan Laundry. I think, I think. Which, I mean, it may, I'm just excited Laundry got in there. <laughs> that, I mean, that that's pretty That's pretty that's good, pretty right? Yeah. Oh, man. So besides Midsummer Murders that you're waiting on the last episode for, have you seen anything good this week? Uh, I have watched a bunch of movies because I've got uh, the Amazon prime my like the fire tv thing now and so it just like pops up it's like watch next i'm like okay whatever so i watched uh, i i think that was just this week i don't tell me again everything's bleeding together uh but the alex cross movies mm-hmm. did we talk about that last no. week was no. that this week or was that okay uh like i said everything blends together but uh so like the old the old ones with um morgan freeman uh, so you got Along Came a Spider and Kiss the Girls. And that led me down this like late 90s uh, crime thriller. Like it seemed like everything after Silence of the Lambs was had like a, you know, sort of female lead. But then like this older guy that was somehow involved is either like a mentor or like the, you know, something like that. So there was like the bone collector where it was Angelina Joey and Denzel Washington. And then the Morgan Freeman movies, there's always a, a, a female uh, cop involved who's kind of his partner. And then you've got like uh, one of my favorite bad movies of all time, because it's just based on a logical fallacy is uh double jeopardy with uh, uh, Ashley, oh, Ashley Judd. Judd. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole idea that you can't be tried for the same crime but the i mean it's it's kind of one of those things where it's like somebody heard a little bit and then was like okay i'm gonna write a whole script about this and then somebody else was like but you misunderstood (laughs) (laughs) and then everyone else is like well you know we like the idea so we're just gonna let it happen so yeah Uh, so i've been watching those and then a lot of uh, a lot of sport a lot of the sporting events with, oh yeah, uh, uh, um, England won today, right? Yeah, England won today, and they're so they're in the final, uh, which I think they haven't won the Euros since like 1966. So that's pretty, pretty huge. 
And then you've got the Copa America, which is the South American, basically version of the their version. Uh, uh, every couple of years, all the countries play against each other, and I'm really cheering for uh, Messi to get to actually win one finally and so people can get off his back because he hasn't won uh the Copa america or he hasn't won the world cup so people will say he's never as good as maradona which isn't fair and he's just ridiculously talented he's only five foot seven does stuff that's just you shouldn't be able to do like he curved one one shot in earlier that like didn't even go in it went off the bar and came out in the last game but it was still a re- like no maybe three people on earth could even get that close so mm-hmm. Uh, that's been really cool, and you've got the finals and the M- and the. And it's just there's a lot going on right now, and uh, my oldest is, or is in a theater production right now, so we got that going on, and my youngest is on his way to uh, his first sporting competition post COVID uh, out of state. So it, uh, it's been a lot going on. It's been exciting. It's uh, really definitely feels like we're back to uh, not enough hours in the daytime. Life is moving and grooving. Yeah. <clears throat> and I got I got a new record player, so we're playing a lot of records. Oh, so. I did see that on big, Instagram. Big, big stuff. Yeah, I saw your picture on Insta. All right, yeah, so... I, spent, uh, uh-huh. I was just going to go off on a tangent about records and decided not to because, <laughs> you know, we're supposed to do a podcast. <laughs> so this is episode like I said 52 which makes it one a full a year and also an even week which means it's on you my friend. Absolutely. So we, we will start with the A side this week as we always do in the even episodes. And because this is our 52nd episode and we've been doing this for one year, the idea of one year has been stuck in my head a lot. Uh, and one thing that has always been a, I don't know, like a mental stub toe moment for me is I tend to fall in love with shows that don't last more than a year. Uh, so I'm always a little scared when a TV show especially it comes out that I really enjoy because a lot of the time I'm the kiss of death, or at least in my own you know, brain, I tell myself I'm the kiss of death and it's not going to last more than a year. So in celebration you're, of wait, our on. one you're year the, anniversary. You're the guy um, on, um, he was on Happy Days and then he was on Married with Children, Ted something and every show in like the 80s and 90s that he was on would end up going off the air. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, blonde, blonde guy. I don't. I'll, okay, I'll find his name and I'll, I'll let you know. Okay, sorry. I, I do remember like the, the famous moment in Happy Days when Fonzie jumped the sh- like he rode his motorcycle over a shark tank as a stunt, and that's when their ratings started to go down, and that's where we got the jump the shark. Metaphor. Yes, but there's one actor that every time he popped up on a show, people were like, "Oh man, oh, oh it's, <laughs> it's gonna get canceled." It's- Oh, we're about to go off the air. <laughs> Why do we hire that guy? <laughs> that, like the that, harbinger of death, you know. That was how they told you that you were get Ted McGinley. Okay, so yeah, he's the the guy I was thinking of from from Married with Children. But I didn't realize he was on Happy Days too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, uh, as far as I know, Ted McGinley does not show up on any of these. Uh, shows that we are mentioning today because in celebration of the one year anniversary, I wanted to go through and talk about some of the best TV shows that only lasted one season. So when I say that uh, anyone who knows me or probably even people who've just listened to me at least a little bit for the last year is thinking, Oh, great. This is just going to be, the A side's love letter to Firefly, isn't it? <laughs> and it's not. Because it could be. I could totally do that. I could do an hour and a half on all the things I love about Firefly uh, and the missed opportunities and whatnot. But I'm not going to. Um, Firefly, of course, was the Joss Whedon space western, uh, starred Nathan Philly and Alan Tudyk and others. And uh, it has tons and tons of pixels on the internet and audio files. Uh, from fans like me giving it love. So uh, this 
side or episode or segment or whatever we want to call it, uh, is not going to focus on Firefly because, and here's my caveat, it got a movie, which is not something that any of the ep- series that we're talking about today can say. So okay. we are going to start with the world of science fiction, and we will start at Fox Television, so very close to uh, Firefly. And the show is Terra Nova. It starred Jason O'Mara and Stephen Lang. It had seemingly, it had it all. I mean, you had time travel, you had a dystopian future, you had political intrigue, you had uh, some almost Oedipal complex father-son stuff between, you know, Stephen Lang's character and and his long-lost son. You had uh, terrorists and bombings. It was, you know, heck, you even had dinosaurs. So you thought, okay, this series has just about everything. Uh, Unfortunately, it because it had everything, it cost a lot of money to make. Uh, dinosaurs do not come cheap. They have an excellent union. Uh, so the Fox Network aired 13 episodes of Terra Nova, lasted one season, but it felt even shorter than that because all 13 episodes uh, aired from September 26th to December 19th. So it was a full season, but it was only around for three months. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like that feels even less, uh, 13 seasons, uh, 13 episodes. It ended with a cliffhanger, uh, which when I watched it made me wonder if there had, they had really even traveled to the past or maybe they traveled to the future or what else was going on there and opened up a whole box of questions. Uh, That were never answered, which is the absolute worst thing about a television show getting canceled, whether it's the first season or, you know, five seasons down the road. There's always 99 percent of the time there are unanswered questions that they were going to pay off in the next season that are just unfair. I mean, can you imagine if a show like Lost had ended after the first season? So much we wouldn't have like known. It might have been better, but Never so Lost. much that we wouldn't have known. Oh, the first season was amazing. Everything after that, it was it was like it, was, it very much reminded me of how The Matrix, the first movie, was so inventive and new, and interesting. And then they went, "Oh crap, people want more. Shoot, we'll have to come up with some stuff." <laughs> uh, and so they started just kind of throwing stuff off the wall, uh, and it got weird. And they both had the cast expand as you know, but. I digress. Terra Nova uh, was enjoyable. It was fun. It built this entire, it crafted an entire world and it made you want more. Unfortunately, you will only get one season. It is available on Amazon Prime with commercials and you can watch the full season on IMDb TV as well, which also IMDb TV, which is a new player in my understanding from the streaming space has a reboot or a continuation of the old USA leverage series, which is a top five series as well. So IMDB TV shooting up the list of Adam paying attention to. They've got really good shows on there. They do. And like, it feels like somebody had to step in and grab all the stuff that was getting dropped because like Netflix went to like, we're making a, bunch of our own stuff because we want it's so expensive to buy other seasons right. and then everybody else is like, oh we got to make our own stuff so all this you know created stuff by netflix and amazon prime and disney plus and and uh apple tv and but there were all these old shows that kind of just got dropped by everybody because they're like we don't want to pay the licensing rights and it seems like imdb was just like standing there with a basket catching them all and being like all right boom look there they are So brilliant idea. I'm excited about that. Uh, So next up on our list of notable one season TV shows, this show launched the careers of both Claire Danes and Jared Leto. In fact, I remember when this show came out and I do not remember it only being one season. It was such a big cultural day. Like people talked about it like crazy. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's only one season. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's exactly what I did, too, because I was like, I feel like I remember watching this because it came out right, you know, and I'm in middle school going into high school. This is very much, you know, down my alley. Uh, It was my so-called life. 
It aired for one season from August of 1994 to May of 1995. It got a ton of critical acclaim, uh, but it was never renewed uh, for a second season. Uh, one of the things that made my soul called life unique for the mid nineties is that it dealt with major social issues, but didn't do so in a, you know, very special episode so sort of way. Uh, it wasn't like Je Jesse, Jesse Spano does, you know, caffeine pills for one episode and then we never talk about it again. Right. It would be like Jesse Spano did caffeine pills, which eventually led to cocaine by the end of the season. Uh, and it, was part of every episode um so some of the uh topics that they you know took on which were heavy for the time uh included child abuse homophobia teenage alcoholism uh homelessness adultery school violence censorship drug use uh all of this was stuff that was really real and for the mid 90s not something that you would see teenagers dealing with in a you know consistent manner um it would have been interesting to see them continue to to, to go on uh, especially if you look at some of the things that happened within the next couple of years i mean this is pre-columbine um how would my soul called life have dealt with you know columbine school violence on that level uh which would have been uh which was for me a pretty amazing thing um so too bad that it only got one season. Uh, however, it did give us Claire Danes and Jared Leto. Uh, even in, no matter how you feel about Jared Leto's Joker, uh, he his Mobius coming out, his uh, Morpheus, Mobius, 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 the, Mobius. Mobius, the, the uh, vampire one for Sony in their Spider-Verse uh, is something that I'm interested to see. Uh, you can stream My Soul Called Life on abc.com for free or with your Hulu subscription as well. So our next one season wonder, uh, the lead character for this show uh, can't catch a break. Uh, even at one point, he was played by Keanu, and even that couldn't get it a sequel. Uh, DC Comics anti-hero John Constantine is one of my favorite comic book characters. Uh, he is your regular working class warlock, occult detective and con man from Liverpool, England, but obviously he lives in London. He is known for his endless cynicism, deadpan snarking, ruthless cunning, and constant chain smoking. But he is also a passionate humanitarian driven by the heartfelt desire to do some good in his life. Uh, you can probably see why he's one of my favorite characters, and I think there is so the much untapped potential. Obviously, chain smoking. That's that's That's... <laughs> where we that's where we really connected uh also all that other stuff but mostly just just the chain smoking so so exciting uh, that is funny to people who don't know me because i do not chain smoke i smoke cigars on occasion but i do not chance it uh that that's why that's funny i would just feel like there's somebody out there being like this guy's making fun of smokers no like, no it's, it's, it's very it's very bad uh so uh he was a the character of John Constantine has a really interesting origin within the comics. He was originally just a supporting character who pops up in a story arc called American Gothic, which was one of the main Swamp Thing storylines. Uh, however, people liked him so much that he then received his own comic in 1988 that ran to 2013 uh, as a sort of weird cool side note uh the creator of constantine said that his that musician sting was an inspiration for the character uh what? so in the mid 80s yeah the mid 80s late 80s like sting's pretty cool like they were like okay we'll just turn him into a working class warlock occult detective and con man which is kind of impressive. Uh, however, not even Sting could, uh, as an inspiration, could save the 2005 film Constantine, which starred Keanu Reeves. Uh, I enjoy it. I've seen it many times. I have it on DVD. However, it did not do well in the box office. Uh, it was one of those action movies that Keanu did after The Matrix, where it felt like people were like kind of just trying to recreate The Matrix in different ways. 
uh, and kind of even filmed with the same sort of color palette, uh, which I think didn't do it a lot of justice. Um, the Constantine TV show uh, was on NBC and it lasted only 13 episodes. However, uh, the character did have a pretty good uh, reception from fans. And so the CW, who actually created the series that was aired on NBC, then migrated the character of John Constantine over to their Legends of Tomorrow series. Uh, and Legends of Tomorrow uh, is still on the air, which yeah, I would have lost that bet when I saw the first season. I Me think they're too. on. They're on like season five now i stopped watching halfway through season one because i just it was didn't hook me uh so i have to i have to dive back in and see what how they worked uh, john constantine into this because again i think he's a horribly uh underserved and underused character uh who if they could just find uh, like honestly if uh like guillermo del toro uh could could hop on that. I think he would make he would do an incredible Hellblazer series, uh, but we'll see. Uh, you can watch Constantine the the NBC series on Amazon Prime, or Amazon Prime if you'd like to pronounce it correctly. And uh, again, Legends of Tomorrow is somehow still on the air, and well, you can catch that on the is CW. Constantine the NBC not not on Peacock as well? Oh, it probably is. I I didn't look for it on there because I was on my Amazon app. But yeah, I should look if it is on the. Sorry to throw Netflix, a wrench in your. You know. No, that's okay. Research. We 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 stop for the truth. <laughs> we stop for the truth here. So I'm going to the Peacock app. Is nothing is is better radio than somebody narrating about them using their phone. So I'm on the Peacock app now. If this was radio, I think you had a flashback. No. Oh yeah. Well, it's it's a podcast. It's close. It says no results are found. Oh, interesting. On the Peacock app. So who knows? Maybe because it's on the CW now, and there's the rights thing. I don't know. Though it always seemed weird that it was created by the people that created all the other DC comic shows on the CW, but it ran on NBC. I was just like, wait a second. All your other stuff is over here. Why why did you randomly go to NBC? But. Uh, I know that somehow they're connected in a bigger, you know, so who owns who situation. But uh, yeah, Constantine is on a Amazon Prime and Legends of Tomorrow is still on the air. All right. Then we move to our next. Uh, and this one has a bit of an asterisk. And uh, it is all thanks to COVID. So last fall, the fall before COVID, so fall of 2019, uh, a new show started, which was a fun mix of crime drama and witty dark humor. It had a incredibly talented cast, uh, Michael Ely, Jake Johnson, and the head star, Colt B. Smothers, who you may better know from the How I Met Your Mother TV show and as Maria Hill in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, it was a sort of crime you know like private detective thing but f she was ex-military and there was also this sort of love triangle happening and she had this really awesome little brother and the show was doing pretty well in fact it was renewed for a second season but then covid hit and because of covid related delays abc ended up changing their mind and canceled the season two so it's despite having pretty good ratings or you know good enough ratings and having uh, a lot of you know people say hey like this is something that should continue and could be good and it, it has the opportunity to grow uh it was canceled on second thought for abc but if you are like me and in denial that there will not be a second season you can catch more of the adventures of Colby Smothers as Dex Perius. Uh, you can stream all of them again on Hulu with your Hulu subscription. Uh, and our last one that lasted only one season, uh, which I think, again, was more... It's one of those shows that I think if they'd just given it two years, people would have caught on to it, but it, it happened so quick. And it is the only one... I mentioned earlier that 
uh, the Firefly series was the only one that had a movie. And there's a little bit of a caveat to that. This one also has a movie, but it started out as a movie first. It technically started out as a book first, so I'm going to let it slide. Uh, and that is the uh, series on that came out in, uh, let's see here, February of 2020. So literally, basically one month before everything went to heck with COVID. And it premiered on Hulu. Uh, it was based on a novel by Nick Hornby, and it was called High Fidelity. Now, High Fidelity is one of my favorite, you know, probably I top 20 movies it. of all time. The The series or the movie? The series. The series. I thought it was so well done. And it updated things that it was just enough of a, of a, of a twist. Uh, so High Fidelity uh, follows an ultimate music fan who owns a record store, uh, obsessed with pop culture and top five lists, all of this sounding very familiar to this podcast. Uh, and in the movie, it was played, you know, the, the, uh, Rob Brooks was played by, uh, John Cusack and it basically goes through, you know, his ups and downs in relationships. And there's a lot of breaking the, the fourth wall and talking to the camera. And it felt the, the movie felt the spiritual succession of, you know, uh, Ferris Bueller, but like Ferris Bueller's midlife crisis is kind of what high fidelity felt like uh and it was so well done and then to update it and to have a younger woman as the main character giving it another twist and also having it be zoe kravitz whose mother was in the first in the movie high fidelity yes. was such a cute little like you know like that's a neat little connection yeah uh, i thought it was incredibly well done and i don't know if we we blame covid or or what uh they also moved the record store in the movie it was so when it was john cusack he's from chicago so the record store was in chicago uh in uh, this one they move it to brooklyn uh there it just was well done and it's one of those that i feel like if they had given it two seasons it really could have taken off but because it came out one month before COVID and it, you know, was one of those where it was released all at once because it's Hulu. So it was like February 14th, Valentine's Day, go binge watch High Fidelity. And then the world fell apart. Um, I wish they would have given it another another chance, uh, but uh, it is still available on Hulu to watch. Uh, and I highly recommend that you go and watch it. Uh, especially if you even remember the movie uh, is a great reimagining, a great update and uh, a huge missed opportunity. Uh, and again, I think we will probably be looking back the last 12 months of missed opportunities uh, for the rest of, you know, pop culture uh, history, but uh, we lost some really good stuff and high fidelity was one of them. So those are five of my notable one season TV shows uh, and none of them were Firefly. I have one for you. And I totally okay. agree with you on High Fidelity. I was really extremely upset when I found out that they were not renewing it because it was a very, like, I'm like, you keep all this other stuff on Hulu and you're not going to renew High Fidelity, yeah. which it's a very well done show. Zoe Kravitz did a phenomenal job in that. I mean, there's some scenes where the emotion in it, you're just like, whoa. But so I agree with you. But um, so I became a Scott Foley fan while watching Scandal. And he did a show that had James Tyler Williams in it that you would probably know from Everybody Hates Chris or Tyler James Williams, excuse me. And it's called Whiskey Cavalier. Okay. And so basically- I've never heard of this. It's an FBI agent and a CIA operative saving the world, but they have, but they don't, they don't get along. Um, and so Scott Foley is the FBI agent and- uh, Laura Cohen is the CIA agent, and I will, I believe she's actually uh, British as well. Yeah. 
So that was one that got one season. And it was one of those where I was like, oh, this is going to be like terrible, but I'm going to watch it anyway because it's got Scott Foley in it because he was Jake on Scandal and I loved him on Scandal. And then it was one of those where it was like, okay, it's about half bad. I want to see what they do next. <laughs> nice. Well, yeah. And again, so that was another COVID probably because February 24th, 2019 and then 2020. It's yeah. And I remember when they posted the video, you know, finding out that they had found out they were not going to be renewed and it was really like emotional. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, these are, uh, that's, uh, there, there used to be a website that I, uh, would follow almost religiously and it was the uh, TV by the numbers and uh they had their cancellation bear and it was like it would definitely look at ratings and be like okay this is where you're at this is where you're at and will the bear get you and will you be canceled um and i would i would look at that every week before because i was so convinced that if i started watching something and this goes all the way back to when the but it was UPN and the WB. So in back in like 94, 95, when the UP Uni, Universal Paramount Network launched, and then you had the WB before it became the CW because they merged at one point. Mm -hmm. The UPN had had these two comp these two shows called Platypus Man and Pigsty. And they were, you know, like half an hour, like, you know, sitcom -y, you know, situational, like, lives of people. And I watched them religiously. Me and one of my friends, we watched every episode. And then we had a basketball game, a seventh grade basketball game on a Thursday night. And neither of us watch. And then next week, they got canceled. Oh, no. So, in hindsight, I have rewatched these episodes. And they deserve to be canceled. They were not good shows, uh, but I was I was a big UPN fan. I really wanted the UPN to work. Uh, I'm not sure why I wanted it so badly to work, uh, but it was it was like ABC, CBS, even Fox. Those were all you know old networks. I wanted the United Paramount work, Network to work, and they also had a Star Trek show, so that was probably why I was so excited. But. Uh, yeah, so the, those two those two got canceled, and I've been convinced that I that I'm like the bad luck charm for a lot of series. <laughs> Ted McGinley. No, I, I'm the Ted McGinley. As soon as I start liking your series, that's why I've watched so many things that have already run their course because then I can't ruin it. Like I can't go back in time and make this the, the cancel this halfway through. It's already done. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, those are some good ones. But uh, that High Fidelity one, if you have not watched High Fidelity, you absolutely should. It's really good. Yeah. The, and, the movie and the series. As a music lover, if you love music, not only is it a good show, but if you love music, like if you love music, you will really appreciate the show because they really get into it. Yeah, it's it is definitely... That's why I thought it was like with the way that vinyl has come back among a younger generation in the last couple of years and like record stores are like, they were almost extinct. And now there's like, it feels like every time I hop on the train to go to the bank or go somewhere, I see a new record store. I'm like, well, what's going on? There's like, they're exploding. So I think it just stupid COVID. Yeah. 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 It messed with a lot of shows. Mess with a lot of shows. I mean, technically, it mess with society as a whole, too. But man, my shows. <laughs> I don't care about society. I care about my shows. <laughs> yeah, like 600,000 people. Ah, that's horrible. But my shows. <laughs> my entertainment. Don't mess with my entertainment. Yeah. There you go. So is that the A side? Uh, th that is the A side. Yeah, it, it devolved into a, a weird commentary on me disliking uh, COVID simply because it ruined my show. <laughs> all right so we've been on a, a dexter binge lately and i was looking at this story and i was like oh man another dexter 
but this one is is a little more relatable because he's actually a police officer. Oh, and so it's, know, like, it's not just lazy reporting where they just like slap Dexter on a oh the the Dexter of you know Boca Raton. No, no, this is this is the Dexter of New York City. But um, yeah, yeah, no. So I guess rounding out our our year of uh, Angelina Jolie podcast and Dexter. Yeah, that's 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 what this is. Uh, I did work Angelina Jolie reference in today. I don't know if anybody noticed that, but it did happen. So. Did you? I did. I must like, have legitimate, it. like legitimately this time, not not just a running bet. Like I actually worked it in. Huh? I missed it. I know. I'm sneaky. <laughs> and so ridiculously proud of myself. Uh, sneaky, sneaky, you. All right. So, like I said, rounding out our 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 year, our number one year, we are this week talking about Manuel Manny Pardo Jr. So Manny, as his friends and acquaintances uh, called him, was born in New York City um, on September twenty fourth of nineteen ninety nineteen fifty six. He was raised in New York, and as a boy, he was a Boy Scout. And not much is known about his childhood besides that fact. Once he got older, um, he be, he joined the Navy and he actually won honors for good conduct and sharpshooting. He was honorably hmm. discharged from the Navy in February of 1978. And then he transitioned, like a lot of people do when they leave the military, he transitioned into law enforcement eventually. So first he worked at a bank as a teller and then he got accepted into the Florida Highway Patrol Academy. So he resigned, uh, he worked for them, and then he resigned from that agency in 1979. Now, again, he was discharged in 1978, worked as a bank teller, got into law enforcement, and then resigned from the Florida Highway Patrol <laughs> in 1979. That was a busy, a busy year, okay? He was trying to find himself. He was, he was going, you know, his life changes. Well, actually, he resigned because he got caught falsifying over 100 traffic tickets and citations. Dang. But apparently, Florida, um, as I do on my show, I have a Florida or not because Florida is crazy. And apparently, they don't do background checks um, or cross-agency checks as they should, or they didn't, because he was soon hired on by the police department in Sweetwater, which is a small city in Miami-Dade County. So while working for the Sweetwater PD, he was praised for his work by his superiors, including the recitation, uh, resuscitation of an infant that had stopped breathing, which I'm sure we've, we've all seen um, video footage, like, you know, body cam footage of like a, a police officer. And when they save the baby, you're just like, oh my gosh, he's a hero, which they are. I mean, don't get me wrong. So. Yeah. Yeah, you, know. you, you can still be a bad dude and be a hero. It happens. It, they, are, they are not mutually exclusive, <laughs> as we have learned over the last 52 weeks. Um, so it was all it was all like peaches and cream for Manny until about 1981. Manny was one of four officers charged in a series of brutality cases filed by the state's attorney general. Those charges were eventually dismissed, but he was fired in January of 1985. So he flew to the Bahamas to testify for a former Sweetwater colleague who was on trial for drug smuggling. So, I mean, I guess if you're going to do things, you might as well do big things. You know, forget these traffic tickets and citations. He's moved up to, you know, big boy crimes. Yeah. It's brutality yeah. and helping his buddy with drug smuggling. You know, just the little stuff. <laughs> Manny claimed that he was a drug agent working with the officer. Um, and for that, he was terminated. So he's a liar. He's a, an abuser. Um, so that's why he was fired. So remember, he was brought up on the charges. Those charges were dismissed. But then he was fired because he lied for a fellow officer on trial. Right. In trial. Oh, no, com committed perjury. If he... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So then Manny began working with the uh, with a, a gentleman named Rolando Garcia for someone else named 
Ramon Alvaro Cruz. They call him El Negro. And he comes back up into our story in just a little bit. So Manny and Rolando begin working together for Ramon in 1986. During a drug deal in Northwest Miami-Dade, Miami and Ramon were supposed to buy two kilos from a gentleman named Mario Amador, who was a civil engineer when he was inside hustling as a drug dealer. Yeah. Roberto Alonso is another person that was in on this deal. And Roberto was a parking lot, parking lot attendant. In the process of this deal, Manny switches up and he orders the two men to the ground. And then with a 22 Ruger pistol, he shot both men in the head, execution style and in the chest. Because he's a nice guy, you know? Yeah, geez, Manny. Resuscitating babies and shooting people in the head, hand in hand. Well, you know, all the days work for Manny. <laughs> so on February 27th of 1986, Manny and Rolando set up a deal for three kilos, again for El Negro. This time the deal is with Luis Robledo. Well, Manny is a self-starter. Manny likes to handle business. So mm. again, um, in the midst of purchasing the drugs, the pair kill Luis and Luis's partner, Alpiano Ledo, shooting them multiple times in the head and chest. A few days later, Manny, apparently bored, got a lot of time on his hands. So he kills Michael Malott. So Michael was a Haitian anti dewaller activist. It was a protest movement in Haiti from May of uh, May 23rd of 1984 till February 7th of 1986. Manny actually believed that Michael was an FBI informant that was setting him up. So Manny and Rolando shoot Michael. Then they put his body in a rural area and they drive his car uh, into a canal. It's covering all the bases. Yeah, right. So we move forward a little bit to April. On April 22nd, Manny and Rolando went to the home of Farah Quintaro and Sarah Musa. The men were upset that Farah and Sarah didn't buy a VCR with Luis Robledo's credit card as they had been instructed to do. Now, remember, Luis was somebody he had killed a person or two ago. Yeah, like they're still using the credit card. Right. So Rolando had told the girls to take Luis's credit card to buy a VCR, and, and they didn't. The women were not aware of Luis's murder. They just knew that this was a credit card that they were supposed to use. Right. So the men were also bothered by the fact that the two ladies kept asking Rolando about $50 that he owed to Farah. So the ladies had apparently complained and badmouthed the men outside to outside parties and word made its way back to Manny and Rolando. So being the gentlemen that they are, mm -hmm. they arrive at the women's apartment and Manny shoots Sarah in the head multiple times before his gun jams. Unfortunately, you're thinking, oh, gun jams, okay, maybe Farah will be okay, even though Sarah was shot. No, because Manny is an animal. So he used Farah's head to unjam his Ruger and then shot her multiple times. Okay. So then the next day, because you know, when you got a busy, busy schedule, you got to keep things going, you know? This guy is very like he's getting a lot of bad you know got a, got a lot of crimes done in, in a small amount of time look like i said when your planner is full you got to keep it going you got to keep it moving yeah. okay that's right <laughs> don't don't slow down so the next day on april 23rd rolando and, and manny met up with their boss el negro that's his nickname ramon mm -hmm. alvero cruz so allegedly, El Negro had not come through on two separate, rather large cocaine deals that he had promised Manny and had subsequently been avoiding him and Rolando. So El Negro, along with his girlfriend, Daisy uh, Ricard, who was a medical lab owner who was simply with the wrong person at the wrong place in time. Mm. Manny and Rolando take El Negro and Daisy to an isolated spot where Manny shoots El Negro with his 22 caliber Ruger. Then he turns to Daisy and he gets a shot off before his gun jams. 
This guy never cleans his guns. Apparently not. For a police officer, he's got a bad handle on his weapon. Yeah. Not a metaphor. <laughs> so Literal. as literally. Unfortunately, as he had done with Farah, he unjammed his weapon by hitting Daisy in the head. He ended up shooting himself in the foot as he unjammed the gun. There's a little bit of solace in that, at least. So now he's got a clear weapon and a victim that he needs to eliminate. So he shoots Daisy multiple times. Manny and Rolando leave Daisy in a secluded area and they put Ramon Alvaro Cruz in the trunk of Ramon's own vehicle. The pair then hop a flight to New York City where Manny went to the hospital because remember, he shot himself in the process mm -hmm. of shooting her. Both men were apprehended in the hospital. The bullet retrieved from Manny's foot matched those found in Ramon and Daisy. Manny said that it was his mission to rid Florida of its drug culture by killing one by one active sellers and buyers of drugs, even though he himself was an active seller. Right. So during his trial, evidence against Manny, the evidence that was used against Manny were actually his own words from um, in the form of diary entries. And look, like, and diaries are going to get you caught up every time. Every time. Well, the, the, the last episode was uh, the guy who, who claimed it was his, his, you know, script for a movie. It was just a diary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. You guys need to listen to more podcasts. <laughs> in several entries, he wrote in detail about the murders. There were also newspaper clippings and photos of several bloody corpses. Add to this because he is such a good, wholesome dude. The Nazi memorabilia that was found in his home, along with his own professed admiration of Adolf Hitler. Manny believed that blacks and Jews were inferior and deserving of extinction. Um, I don't know if Manny did a whole lot of research because Manny has some Hispanic Latino roots. Um, mm -hmm. And well, Hitler wasn't a fan of them either. Yeah. He, he wasn't, you know, he was pretty master race, not, you know, master races. Pretty much if you weren't blonde hair, blue eyed, you, you didn't fit into Hitler's plan there, Manny. And you were not blonde nor blue yeah. eyed. Which is the, the weirdest thing because neither was Hitler. Right? Right. Like, how did, it, it's very, it's, it's got like a whole emperor's new clothes thing where like, like no one wanted to say like, you know, you know, uh, Adolf, you're, you're not blonde or blue haired. Okay. Right. Like, like Adolf, 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 have you looked in the mirror? You can, you, you, you're not blonde. You yeah. don't have blue eyes. Just saying, my man. Yeah. It, uh, somebody it, it just just brings up and I don't mean to go off on a, a tangent here but it's very much like the first uh, it was sketched from one of the first uh, Dave Chappelle show episodes mm -hmm. where it was, a, it was a blind black man who was the leader of a clan oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and um, like big no, something big yeah big. yeah yeah and nobody and nobody wanted to tell him because he was just <laughs> so good at being a racist but... <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. So we were, somebody was talking about that at work and it just brought me back. It was like, and this is, this feels like the same thing. Yeah. Like Manny doesn't, yeah. isn't seeing the big picture here. So against the advice of Manny's court ordered, a court appointed attorney, uh, Ronald Goralnik, Manny took the witness stand in his own defense. Hmm. On the stand, he claimed, quote, I am a soldier. I accomplished my mission. And I humbly, humbly ask you to give me the glory of ending my life and not send me to spend the rest of my days in state prison. Manny admitted to killing all nine victims, but stated that they were all drug dealers who, quote, had no right to live and that he was doing society a favor. So he busted out the true lies. Yeah, but they were all bad. 
Right. So this is the Dexter comparison. He was, you know, yeah. taking out the bad guys. So prosecuting attorney David Waxman count, uh, countered stating that Manny was in fact just a cold blooded killer. And according to the Clark County prosecutor's site, the state presented the case that Pardo and Garcia's were in fact drug dealers and were just eliminating the competition. Mm -hmm. In one of the wildest moments of the trial, the prosecutor, again, David Waxman, who we just mentioned, um, is trying to portray Manny as a, a mercenary drug dealer, asked Manny about $50,000 he had earned from selling two kilos of cocaine, um, a sum he himself listed in his diary. Manny insisted he only kept about 2000 which was the bare minimum required to be able to buy a gun and ammunition. Manny added that the bullets cost 10 cents each. The prosecutor, Prosecutor Waxman, asked Manny if it cost him only $1.30 to kill two victims who he'd shot a total of 13 times. Manny grinned and said, that's a pretty good investment, isn't it? Whoa, that's some cold stuff right there. But yet he's the good soldier. Yeah. Uh, uh, sir, uh, reality is on line three. Yeah. So it only took the jury six hours to deliberate on April 15th of 1988. Look, if your jury is out and it's not, and they come back and it's not even lunchtime, that is not good for good news for you. Yeah. They didn't even get the free meal out of it. They were like, <laughs> yo, guys, let's just, you know. Like there's a there's a hot dog truck out front. Let's just let's all just meet there after. <laughs> we can just get an Auntie Anne's pretzel. We'll be good. Let's get this yeah. out. Yeah. You know, like I've lost my appetite. Let's just <laughs> let's get out of here. So the jury deliberated for six hours before convicting Manuel Pardo of nine counts of murder and nine other felonies, including robbery and the use of a firearm in the commission of a crime. While incarcerated, Manny, aka the Death Row Romeo. We talked about this them doing this last week too. He has oh placed, my goodness. he had placed several ads in tabloids, quote, looking for love and attracting lonely female pen pals who would send him money in return for romantic infection affections. Infections too, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> so one ad read. Uh, FL 116 156 Correctional Inst uh, Institute inmate, ex cop, Vietnam vet, took law in own hands and ended up on death row. He needs letters from sensitive, understanding female for real, honest relationship. So, a woman named Barbara Ford, 46 years old, a cleaning lady from Ohio, was one of the ad's respondents. Manny wrote her back his letter containing news clippings about him, the, the, the positive ones, you know, like the baby. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which and I love how this guy's just got extra news clippings lying around. He's like, oh, I got a letter. Someone grab, you know, one of my 15 copies. That's what I was going to say. How did he get all these extra news clippings? Like, what? Whatever. You got nothing but time when you're sitting in prison to figure these things out. Yeah. Or there was a grandmother or, or a mom involved. Yeah, they keep those things. They're great at it. I, w I was going through some stuff in my storage areas that I went through a box. I'm like, why do I even have this box of stuff? And it's like old newspapers, but they all had specific dates. So I was like, well done. <laughs> so he sends the positive news clippings about his career. He also wooed her with sweet words, but those didn't last long as the sweet notes soon became letters filled with complaints about his situation and his pleas for money with Barbara, which she happily obliged for her love she sent four hundred and thirty dollars of her seventy five hundred dollar salary her total salary good good another woman that manny was corresponding with was 54 year old betty eham from oklahoma betty and uh, betty and manny had met before barbara came along Betty and Manny were referring to each other affectionately as husband and wife, but Manny didn't take enough time when writing letters and he made oh, a no. fatal mistake. He accidentally sent Betty a letter that was intended for Barbara. It reads, my dearest Barb, 
Hi. I hope this letter finds you in the best of health. You are all I want and need. I am not a dream. And if my love interests you, well, then it's yours. I love you, Mammy. Funny how he requested an honest, real relationship from these women, but, you know, screw that. We can, yeah. He can do what he wants. I mean, like, it wasn't even, like, a long letter. Like, dude, that took, like, 30 seconds to write. Seriously, dude, you've got nothing but time. You couldn't have done better than that. So Betty sends the letter forward to Barbara along with her own letter. Barbara receives the letter and then she responds to Manny calling him the thief of hearts. She also called him a liar and a hypocrite. And she asked, mm -hmm. well, actually more like demanded for him to return all of the money that she had sent him. Yeah, it's, I, it, that's, he's not going to send that back. I'm sorry. It's, it's not like he's got it hiding in the mattress in jail. Mm. She told him that if he didn't, she'd become his worst nightmare and expose him. Manny replied to Barbara with a letter on November 2nd of 1995. Barb, what happened to, my, what happened to my dearest? No, just Barb. Barb, I hope you're in good health. I am reading your letter and I'm amazed that you think your threats would affect me at all. You and your troubled life will also be exposed. In addition, my attorney will have a field day with you and will be your nightmare lawsuit for slander, etc. You are a bitter, vindictive woman. God bless, Annie. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> also, did he did he write etc. in there? Yes, yes. Like he's like, we're gonna get you for stuff. Ergo, <laughs> i.e., I, yeah. ipso facto, <laughs> it's like what? Yada, yada, yada. I yeah, mean, he yada, 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 the, <laughs> the things we're going to sue you for. But I love it. He ended with God bless. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jeez. So passive aggressive. <laughs> So Barbara took her case to the then Florida governor, Lawton Childs, on November 18th. Her response actually came from Judy Belcher at the Department of Corrections on November, November 24th, informing her that Manny hadn't actually committed a crime regarding their situation. And that Florida statutes have ruled Just that- Just a jerk. Yeah, exactly. Florida statutes have ruled that it's illegal to deny prisoners access to the outside world because she wanted him restricted. Mm. Judy Bunch. also noted, quote, they are convicts and some experts at some are experts at conning honest people out of their hard earned dollars. Often we advise a person that an inmate is not an honest person. The person will still <laughs> choose to believe the inmate. Yeah. <sighs> so Manny was but... free to continue scamming until December 10th of 2000. Well. When Manny, he scammed his last scam? Yeah, yeah, his last scam of life. Manny was executed in Florida on December 11th of 2012 by lethal injection and was pronounced dead at 7:47 p.m. Manuel Pardo Jr. served 26 years on death row before his execution. How many women do you think he scammed? First of all, first of all, first of all, first of all, first of all. Who's responding to this? Hey, the, the heart wants what the heart wants. And we want to believe the best of people. Look, there was Google in 2012 or 10 nope. yeah. or 8 yeah. or whatever year. And I'm not victim blaming here, but do a Google search. Yeah, you should always do a Google search. He killed I mean, nine people. It wasn't like I had an accident. I, you know, I fell asleep you know, driving and I, I, it was a manslaughter charge. That's horrible. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, he intentionally killed nine people. Nine orchestrated and committed the murders of nine people under the guise of being what? Like Batman. I'm Batman. Yeah, basically. So, so Batman doesn't kill. So much more like the Punisher. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Manny's final meal was rice red beans, roasted pork, plantains, avocado, tomatoes, and olive oil. Okay, side note, 
again, we're going to go back to um, Manny's love of Hitler. I don't think Hitler was going to be eating plantains and red beans and rice. It's, it's, maybe it's just he hadn't had them yet. Mm-hmm. And Manny thought he would love him if he'd just given him a try. Mm-hmm. Okay, Manny. Forgetting who you are. Uh-huh. Whatever. Uh, for dessert, he had pumpkin pie and eggnog. Under Department of Corrections rules in Florida, the meal's ingredients have to uh, cost $40 or less, be available locally, and be prepared in the prison's kitchen. That's a very reasonable set of circumstances, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 40 yeah. bucks. Yeah, that's plenty. Yeah. $40 is a lot for one meal. Yeah, for one person. Yeah. So Manny's final words were, airborne forever, I love you, Mish, or Mishi referring to his daughter in 2015 the shooter video game hotline miami 2 wrong number in this game one of the characters is a deranged miami police department homicide detective man named manny pardo who uses his authority to go on violent rampages for the good of miami the character is seeking revenge and retribution for violent crimes that criminals have committed while making top headlines in miami the player also controls who the player also controls throughout the story. During the game, Pardo chooses a criminal, um, excuse me, chases a criminal dubbed in the headlines as the Miami Mutilator, who proves to be a very sophisticated criminal, forcing Pardo to escalate in the brutality of his justice. And I found that on a fandom page. So this guy ended up getting a video game named after him, uh -huh. basically. A character in a video game, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Manny was featured on the show Most Infamous, Season 1, Episode 23, and Killer Cops, Season 1, Episode 10. There has been speculation that the character Dexter Morgan, bringing it all, bring it around town, bring it around town. All uh, the way back to the beginning. <laughs> that the um, fictional serial killer vigilante who works as a forensic technician at the Miami Day Police Department was in fact inspired by Manny in part due to their resemblance. Another Dexter character, Miguel Prado, was also named after Manny. So Manny's partner, we can't forget about him, hmm. Rolando Garcia was arrested on May 23rd of 1986 and charged with 24 counts, eight counts of first degree murder and 16 related offenses. He had two mistrials and eventually five counts related to the Quintera Musa, that's Sarah and Farah, uh, murders were mm -hmm. severed. He was convicted for the deaths of Mario Amador, Roberto Alfonso, Luis Robledo, and Yulipano Leto, and sentenced to death. From what I could find, he is currently still on death row. As far as we know, he's not trying to con three women at a time, though. I don't believe so, no. But there you go. That's the Miami Dade inspiration for Dexter. Yeah, sounds like it. Except I prefer Dexter, actually. Because well, yeah. I mean, they, they didn't... I mean, understandably, they left out the, the Hitler part. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, it's still baffling. So there you go. That for our first official year is the B-side. So Adam, you posted a photo today of a sweatshirt. Looking good, my man. Yes, I, I, was, I did a good job of keeping my very tired face out of it. So it looks excellent. <laughs> uh, but I, I, uh, I love wearing that sweatshirt out. And even today, I uh, had uh, somebody comment on it. Uh, as we were, as I was on the bus and I was walking on the street, somebody uh, said they liked it. So uh, I was hustling through not the greatest part of town, but uh, I did say thank you as I continued to hustle. Well, maybe the blood and guts on the t-shirt or the sweatshirt will keep them from bothering you. Not really guts, but blood. Well, well, and it's and it's always a it's a weird like I love getting compliments on the sweatshirt, but when it's a complete stranger and the sweatshirt like has blood spatters, it's a weird compliment to get. <laughs> but I it's think like, it makes it obvious. Oh, it is a true crime. 
partly. Yeah. Partly. Yeah. It, but it's just like, oh, I like how your sweatshirt's splattered with blood. <laughs> yeah. It's got plenty. <laughs> it's doing good. Doesn't need any more. <laughs> Uh, speaking of sweatshirts, we've got a plenty on our website, Adam. Yeah, it is a side b side dot square dot site. No, a side b side podcast dot square dot site. There you go, a side b side podcast dot ah. square dot site. Good job. Um, also, that's a way that you can support the podcast. Also, while you're on our website, you can check out any sources. We can check out photos. We post all of those over there. Um, also, if you have any questions or if you have a story that you'd like to submit or that guy, that girl that you have not done yeah. yet from uh, yes. that show, um, you can submit those I've, I've there. Been, I've been way too gender biased in my uh, that guy, that show. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We need to correct uh, that. Come on. Yeah. We are a progressive podcast. We are. We, we we talk about Angelina Jolie and we talk about Dexter. <laughs> um. Also, you can support the podcast by heading on over to buymeacoffee.com slash A side B side pod. We have all the socials. We've got uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And uh, if you would like to message us or email us, you can do that as well. It's uh, A side B side podcasts with an S at gmail.com. Because uh, we got 52 of them. What? <laughs> so we'd love to hear from you. We'd also love a rating review uh, over on Apple from you. So uh, let us know what you think of the podcast. Uh, only if it's good things, though. Only if it's good things. Nah, we'll take the bad stuff, too. Just direct those to me. I'm yeah. Used to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. Do that. I'm too fragile. I'm too frail. I can't handle it. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I don't know if that's the if that's if that's remotely true, but all right. <laughs> one of us has been in the military. The other one filled out a postcard to get a lanyard from the military. <laughs> that was a pretty nifty lanyard, let me tell you. It was, and it was a very short recruiting call. The guy called, and he was like, "Hey, so you sent in this postcard?" He's like, "Yeah, I just really wanted the lanyard." He's like, "Well, you're going to college?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be a theater major." He's like, "Good luck." And goodbye, scene. Yes. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, there you go. That is uh, number 52. We've been at this a year. Yay. Yeah, and I've, I've at least added five years of my life in the two hours of laughing every Wednesday night. So thank you. <laughs> it is a pleasure, and I'm glad we we are doing this and I'm, I'm glad we will continue to do this. So thanks, Adam. Thanks, Brooke. Talk to you later. As always, thank you for listening to A-Side B-Side podcast. If you enjoy the show, please, if you don't mind, head on over to Apple and leave us a rating or a review. And if you'd like to continue to support the podcast, you can do so by heading on over to Patreon or you can buy us a coffee as well as buying merch on our website, A-Side B-Side podcast dot square dot site. From Adam and I at A-Side B-Side podcast, please remember to wear your mask, social distance if you're around people that don't live in your household and just be safe and happy. Thanks again from us here at A-Side B-Side Podcast.